Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Nathan Bryan here. You know, I've been looking over the comments and kind of the headlines from the announcement last week of President Trump and Bobby Kennedy Jr. talking about the role of Tylenol or acetaminophen when pregnant women take it, increased risk of their babies developing autism. Now, do I think acetaminophen or Tylenol causes autism? Probably not. But what I do think and what the data support is it could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. So it could increase your risk of developing a kid with autism. And certainly there are women who took Tylenol or acetaminophen during pregnancy and didn't have kids with autism. And also there are people who probably didn't take Tylenol when pregnant who had kids who later developed autism. So we have to take this in the proper perspective. And what do the data indicate and reveal? And I think that autism is caused by a number of things, not a single thing. But as you start to stack these risk factors and these things that contribute or confound the development of autism, and then we can take steps to reduce the exposure and start to untangle and peel back the layers of this onion, then we can get a clear understanding of what's causing autism. 77% of the women who have autistic kids believe their gut instinct tells them that it was due to a vaccine because the effect only occurred after a certain vaccine schedule. But obviously some people develop it, some people don't. Are there contributing factors that increase susceptibility or risk of it? Absolutely yes, because I think the importance of this announcement in this study is to understand many, not just one, but many of the risk factors or things we may be doing or exposing the mother to or the baby to. You know, if I had my kids were all vaccinated, but in a timely manner, we spaced them out. We're not getting 16 at one, one at a time, allow them to their body to adapt to that, develop antibodies against it. But you know, our body's never designed to see that many antigens at one time. And so it creates confusion. A lot of times the vaccines will cause fever. And then the mothers will give the baby acetaminophen or Tylenol to suppress the fever. So the body's confused. It has a hard time recognizing self from non-self and it causes neurological damage. So I think we take this study and this announcement for what it is. It's certainly a step forward in the right direction of starting to identify single components that may increase the risk of certain diseases. In this particular case, it's autism. But I think if we can understand that, understand the risk benefit, eliminate the things that are really causing risk without any benefit, then eventually we're gonna get to the bottom of this and get a clear understanding of what makes certain people susceptible to developing autism spectrum disorders and other people that are resistant. So I like the direction of this administration. I like them understand the root cause, understand risk factors that we just taken for granted for centuries, for decades, because just because it's an over-the-counter drug does not mean it's safe. In fact, acetaminophen, Tylenol, is the leading cause of liver failure and liver transplants in the U.S. So it is not a safe drug. It should only be used judiciously under certain medical supervision. Be judicious in your use of any medication. And certainly if you're pregnant or planning to get pregnant, and also once your kid's born, you know, understand what you're putting in their body, what on their body, so that they can live a long, healthy life and develop normally, both physically and neurologically. So I'm excited about this. Stay tuned. Well, please comment, give me your thoughts, and uh, we'll provide the scientific perspective from a biochemist and physiological perspective to your comments. Thanks for listening.